Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video because we're playing Mountain Blade Bannerlord and we're doing another Strengths and Weaknesses video and this one is for the Empire and now mind you it is important to remember that although all three factions of the Empire are extremely similar and will share all, all the same basic strengths and weaknesses they are three separate factions and should not be treated as one. So basically the Imperial region is the largest in the game it stretches from well it's basically encircled by these lakes and rivers and stuff. So it's this whole central region here. It borders the well, basically every single faction. It borders the uh, Vlandians over here, the Batanians right here, the Sturgians up here, the Kuzates over in the east, and then the Azurai to an extent because there's a giant lake between them, but the Azurai to the south. So you are surrounded by every single faction. And then it's important to remember that you yourself are three factions. So you have the Northern Empire, the Southern Empire, and the Western Empire. Uh, and... So it's important to remember that it is all three. But it is an extremely large region with a, with a lot of resources. So it it's, in my opinion, probably the easiest playthrough, even though you start totally surrounded by potential enemies. But let's just dive on into it and start off with the strengths for the troops in the Empire. All right, so just starting off for uh, our troop strengths, we have an archer variety, and both of them are pretty solid. So you have top tier, uh, tier five archers, and the two options are your Imperial Palatine Guard, which is a traditional uh, bow and arrow archer, and then the Imperial Sergeant Crossbowman, which is a crossbow archer. And now this is a great strength because you have the option for both. When you go to somewhere like Vlandia, who has the best uh, crossbowmen in the game, these ones are slightly inferior to them because their crossbow is not quite as powerful, but you also have the option of a pretty solid bow and arrow archer, which Vlandia does not have. And whereas you take up somewhere like the Azurai, who have a very good bow and arrow archer, they don't have crossbowmen. So the Empire has both. Neither one of them are the best in class in the game, but both of them are very, very close. So it makes them very competitive in the archer segment. I find typically that although either could be used for both, I like like to have archers in the open field like bow and arrow archers in the open field better and crossbowmen are better for defending castles. Uh, a strong force of crossbowmen defending your castle makes it so most of the enemy troops are dead before they even get to the walls. I typically like to go with them and I think it's a great strength that the Empire has uh, either option both in a pretty good supply. So that is uh, the first strength for troops. The next one is their heavy shock cavalry, the Imperial Elite Cataphract. Again, they're not as good as the Vlandian Banner Knights, but they are either second or third place. Some people will say that the Vlandian Vanguards are also better than the Cataphracts. I say that they're real close. I'd say the Cataphracts probably have an advantage because their horses are extremely well armored, as are they. Plus the Cataphracts have the nice long, it's a longer lance than the Vlandian Lance, even though they can't couch it. So, you know, both have strengths and weaknesses, but other than the Vlandians, there's no competition for the Imperial Elite Cataphract for shot cavalry in the game. They are top tier, excellent troops, extremely powerful. They are the noble troop tree, so you have to find the Imperia Vigla recruits and recruit them up. And since the Vigla recruits don't start with a horse, you are going to need the war horses to upgrade them. So there are weaknesses and downsides to the Cataphract, but they're such a good shot cavalry that you can amass an extremely large numbers because of the size of the empire that uh, I've had extremely powerful cavalry based armies you know working with the Empire. So I think the Elite Cataphracts are an extremely good troop strength. Another one is the Imperial Legionary, which is a class of heavy infantry. So they're a sword and shield infantry, typically equipped with the Pelum, which you can see as on his back, which can be used as a polearm, but typically is best used as a throwing weapon. They also have a shield, a sword, and very heavy comprehensive armor. So they're some of the best infantry in the game. The only infantry that outclasses them is going to be the Sturgeon Heavy Axemen and Spearmen, uh, both of which are superior to the legionary in pretty much every way. Again, that still leaves every other faction that has inferior infantry. And again, because these are the regular ones straight from the recruits, it is really easy to get a giant army of these guys going on. And once you do, again, it's hard to beat them. So the imperial legionaries are definitely a strength for the Empire. And finally, for troop strengths, we have the Imperial Bucellari, which are their mounted archers. These troops are fine. They're definitely not the best in the game, but they exist, so that's an advantage over Sturgia, the Batanians, and the Vlandians, who uh, the Vlandians don't have any mounted skirmishers at all, and the Batanians and Sturgians don't have mounted archers. So, you know, it's a serious advantage over all of them. The only competition for the Empire, then, is the Kuzates, who have the best mounted archers in the game, and the Azurai, 
Jedi, who are probably also better than the Imperial Mounted Archers, but at least you have them in the Empire. Uh, as far as general things about the Bucellari specifically go, uh, their greatest weakness is that their horses aren't armored, so they're really easy to take down. Enemy archers will take them out, especially like crossbowmen are very quick at taking out Bucellari, and then you just have regular archers on foot. Admittedly high athletics for a mounted unit since they have 100 athletics, but their riding is 120 and their bow is 140 and one-handed is 130. They do have the advantage of starting off with two quivers of arrows and have decently good armor. So like I said, I consider the Imperial Bucellari to be a strength, but they are definitely outclassed by most other mounted archers in the game. All right, so then for weaknesses, uh... The main one, I would say, is the lack of a convincing two-handed infantryman. And so the closest thing that you get in the Empire for that is the Imperial Elite Menavliaton, which is their spearmen, basically. They're equipped with a spear, uh, oftentimes a one-handed weapon, and their throwing pilum. They can be useful. I've used them effectively in defensive formations against... Uh, cavalry, and because they've got that pull arm, they can be used for it. But they're not good line breakers, so they're really bad at breaking through uh, enemy infantry lines. And they're they usually, you know, typically use their spear, which uh, makes them outclassed by most other people, uh, most other factions' infantry who will use an axe or a sword or something. And and I find the Manavliaton to be a pretty bad unit just in general. I think they die too easily for how much it takes to get them to this point. But so that's a weakness. They don't have a good two-handed infantry. Then the other ones are just. Uh, uh, general weaknesses like the legionaries, although very good, are expensive and they're still outclassed by the Sturgeon infantry. The cataphracts are very good, but they're expensive and they're outclassed by the Vlandian heavy cavalry. The sergeant crossbowmen, again, are quite good crossbowmen, but they're outclassed by the Vlandian crossbows. And the uh, Imperial Palatine guards are pretty good, but they're outclassed by the Kuzate, Az uh, Azurai, and the Batanian archers. So the Empire is, I love the way that the game balanced it because all of their troops are pretty dang good and they specialize really well, but none of them are the best. Every single troop you have, even the best Imperial troops, are outclassed by a different faction's troops. General strengths are that they have pretty dang good troops. General weaknesses for the troops are that none of them are the best troops. Then outside of troops, uh, we do have some general strengths to the Empire. Um, the first one is there are lots of settlements. Because you have three different factions of the Empire and all of them are pretty large, uh, you have lots of towns and villages to recruit Imperial troops from. So if you're doing a playthrough where you're specifically trying to use just Imperial troops, uh, there's never a shortage of them. You can quickly fill up however many troops you can carry, and they're constantly responding. Even if you're at war, there will be villages that have not been looted, so you can get lots of troops. So that's a general strength of the Empire. Another one is there is a large economy, because there's three different ones, and you can, as long as you're not at war with, uh, you know, you're in one faction that's at war with another, there are plenty of settlements where you can buy all sorts of goods, you can make a hell of a good trade profit from them because you can find almost any resource for sale uh, somewhere in the Empire, and there are lots of horses. So unlike the Vlandians, who have a constant horse so shortage, among other factions, uh, there are plenty of horses in the Empire, so I never find it hard to keep myself supplied here. Another advantage is that the Empire in general just has good armor and weapons. You can see, A, I think that it's probably the coolest looking armor, this is probably my favorite current set of Imperial armor here, uh, but they all look excellent, but more importantly, they also function very, very well. When you're looking at rankings of different armor pieces and everything, Imperial, high-tier high Imperial stuff like this ranks near the top. It's It gives you very, very good protection, and typically isn't nearly as heavy as certain factions like the Sturgeon heavy armor or the Vlandian heavy armor, which can get quite weighty. So the Empire has good, high-quality weapons and armor, and their armor offers decent protection for how much it weighs. Lastly, as we talked about in troops just in general, the troops may be... They're, they're basically a jack of all trades and a master of none. The troops are versatile. They don't specialize as well as other factions troops do, which is why they're outclassed, but all of them are pretty dang good. So they're very versatile. You can use them in a lot of different things. Uh, the cataphracts, for exa example, are you know, top tier shot cavalry, but they can also be used as infantry. And that goes for basically every troop in the in the imperial line you can use them for whatever you need them for and they work pretty well at it uh then on the other side we have general weaknesses so the main one of that is that the high-end units do require a lot of training so it takes a lot of xp and there and also a lot of time and money to get them up to the highest tier so that's a weakness it's not fast to get any of them to the top uh another one being early infantry lacking pole arms so when you look at their earlier infantry uh well i mean so you look at imperial infantrymen they're 
pretty bad troops in general, but they're only tier two. Uh, once you get to the trained infantrymen, you have a nice large supply of uh, little throwing javelins, but again, no polearm, which makes them very weak against cavalry. It's not until you get yourself to the infantrymen and then the legionary where you even have the pilum, but that's not a polearm. It's like I said, it can be used as one, but not very effectively because it's not long, and it's mostly just used as a throwing weapon. The manavliaton is the only way where you're going to get those spears, which are going to make your infantry a lot more effective against cavalry, but like I said, overall, they're not a very good unit. Unit. That's their the Empire's infantry are very weak against uh, cavalry, which is a big weakness for the Empire. And uh, another one is just of the lack of extra weapons. We saw this with Vlandia too. You don't see uh, the troops ca carrying. Uh, of a large variety. So you go through the infantrymen, they have a throwing weapon, uh, but they don't have a, a polearm, like I said, and then the infantrymen and the legionary, they have the pilum, which is excellent against shields, but they only have one. So you don't get a lot of throwing weapons. Your archers don't uh, come with tons and tons of arrows. I mean, like I said, the Palatine card, guard has two quivers, which is nice, but the veteran archer only has the one, as does the trained archer and the imperial archer, and the sergeant crossbowman only has the one quiver of bolts. So they're... They're good enough troops, they diversify well, but they don't fully utilize what they could. They all have empty weapon slots that could have been used to make each of these troops better. And the final general weakness is just being surrounded by enemies. Uh, like I said, I still consider the Empire to be the easiest playthrough because of the overwhelming resources and uh, troop variety and availability, but... The downside is, you know, let's say you side with the Northern Empire, you're surrounded by two different factions of the Empire to the south, which can be hostile. Uh, you have the Bat Batanians directly to the west, the Sturgeons directly to the north, and the Kuzates directly to the east. And, of course, also the possibility of being at war with the Azerai to the far south and the Vlandians to the far west. So it's just, you don't have any safety net or, like, areas where you know you don't have to worry. So when you're playing, it's really easy to constantly be just running back and forth, putting out fires on defense instead of being able to turn the tide. So it is a weakness starting off surrounded by a whole bunch of different enemies. And uh, as far as our combat strategy goes, I find with the Empire, the best way to go is very balanced. And that makes sense considering how their troops are made. None of them are the absolute best in the game, but all of them are pretty close. You know, they're, they're taking the number two or three spot on each list. So the way that I like to balance my Imperial Army is 25% uh, Heavy Cavalry, 25% Mounted Archers, 25% Infantry, and 25% Archers. So like I said, really balanced. And then what I'll do is I'll take my Legionaries and I'll put them in an Infantry Shield Wall. I'll put my Archers right behind them. Typically, I like to focus on the Crossbowmen with the uh, Empire. Uh, just because they do have the greater range and the stopping power on the bolts. And I typically find that against certain factions, it will be easy enough to defeat them just with crossbowmen and against the other factions where your archers are going to suffer more so against like kuzates or something like that where they've got really high mobility archers which will pick yours off it doesn't make a difference if you use the bowmen because then you, you lose them either way so i i typically stick with the crossbowmen if i can until i get late game and have so many troops that it doesn't matter and then like i said i put my crossbowmen in the castles and i keep my archers out on the field uh, but yeah, so I'll do the infantry shield wall in the front. I'll put my archers loosely spaced behind them. Then I'll have my mounted archers out skirmishing, which is good for distracting a lot of your enemy cavalry. And I will have controlled cavalry charges. So much like I do with the Vlandians, I'll keep my 25% of my cataphracts. I'll keep them in a controlled block over to the side and I'll use them to charge and then break off and reform and then charge and break off and reform. I find that that's very effective. The legionaries in a shield wall are extremely good troops, only outclassed by the Sturgeon heavy infantry, and the archers are more than capable of taking out pretty much all enemies as long as they're protected, which the legionaries do quite well. So I find that a balanced method works extremely well for the Empire, again, making them a really good starting faction for beginners. Other than that, for castle defense, it's best to focus on legionaries and crossbowmen. They just make the best defenders. The Palatine guards are also fine. Avoid Manavliatons, they're just not a good troop, especially for defending a castle. And for offense, it's going to be more of the same. I like to have a heavy emphasis on archers because they're good at taking off, picking off enemies on the wall, but also enough legionaries uh, to be able to take the walls and move on in. Uh, the major downside in sieging is they don't have a good two-handed infantry, so busting through the gate, you need a battering ram, otherwise it just takes all day. So that is really the Empire in a nutshell in Bannerlord. They're very balanced, they're a good jack-of-all-trades, they're extremely easy to start as because of their huge size and, and resource surplus. 
uh, but they can be challenging, especially if you're playing on an appropriate difficulty level. So that's the Empire. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope if you're looking for this sort of stuff that this was useful. Uh, but that's all for today, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.